Hello, welcome back to Creasy's Workshop. I'm John and this week's project we're making a gear for the lathe and it will be one of these change wheel gears that are used uh, to control the lead screw of the lathe which is something you use if you want to cut a thread uh, on a lathe. So I need a 63 tooth gear and I've got some cast iron so we're going to see basically the process of making one of these spur gears. So I hope you find it useful. Okay, I've got some cast iron and the first thing I want to do is to get a reference surface. So I put it in the chuck and I'm just going to clean up the end and uh, make sure it's nice and round and face it off. And then once that's cleaned up, we can flip it over and deal with the rest of it. And if anything happens, we've got a good surface uh, we can re-clamp on and things won't change too much. If I just use that rough surface that it comes with if if the parting tool digs in or uh, anything happens and I have to re-clamp it it's very difficult to get it back to where it was. So I'm getting a pretty good surface finish here and just cleaning up the edge uh, make sure it's uh, nice and smooth very nice finish there. Cast, this cast iron is really good. Okay we flipped it over and we're doing the other side and just getting it to shape before I part off a chunk which is um, just a bit bigger than what I need uh, for to make a gear. I'll clean it all up while I'm here, may as well. And then get the parting tool in and uh, we can try and slice off a piece. Okay, here's the parting tool in action and I had all kinds of dramas with this. I don't know why. I tried all kinds of different speeds and feeds and um, it just kept digging in on me. It's not the best parting tool in the world at the best of times. So we ended up on the coward's parting tool, the bandsaw and uh, that took some time but we got there and uh, ended up with a f fairly decent slice um, uh, which I then cleaned up with a facing cut as is tradition. And the next step was to drill out the blank and bore it to a 5 8 diameter which is the standard for my change gears. Now we want to make a mandrel to hold our gear blank so that we can finish off the final diameter to size and we'll leave it in the chuck and we'll transfer that chuck to the milling machine so we can cut the teeth. So it should be pretty concentric because we've machined that mandrel in place and we haven't disturbed it. And I'm just uh, tapping the end so I can clamp the, the blank in place. Um, with a, uh, a big washer that I uh, knocked up uh, off camera and tightened it up with the Allen key and that worked really well. And now I'm just putting the center drill in to uh, clean up the Allen key or the hex bolt that I've used and that will allow me to use the center, uh, the live center to steady everything up and um, that worked really well as well. I'm taking some monster deep cuts here and the chips are coming off amazing for cast iron. Uh, you don't normally see that. I think it's um, some kind of ductile cast iron. I'm not really sure but the, uh, the chips were amazing and the surface finish was great. Okay here's the setup. We've got the rotary table, we've got our blank uh, held st still in the chuck uh, where we machined it on that arbor got this um, this uh, um, 
gear cutting tool set up in, on the center height and we've got the um, the wheel set up from the book is uh, for 63 teeth it's 1 and 29 49 so it's a 49 49 whole wheel and we go around once plus 40 plus 21 and we've got a depth of cut of 2.86 so we're going to see how that goes we're about to take our first cut full depth You can see that I've already been around once just to make sure that we've got the right number of um, divisions on our gear. I never trust those books. <laughs> so I set it up and did a test run which took ages. Uh, and then I counted them. That's why there's writing on the end of the wheel just to make sure there's the right number. But it worked out and um, also the other thing that's easy to get wrong here is the clearance um, between the, the cutter and the chuck especially where the jaws are but I was I got that right as well um, so yep it's just a matter of going full depth and going around once and then use those selector arms to get the 21 spacing and once you've moved you always move the selector arm to the next spot and here we are in fast forward uh, it looks really easy <laughs> but it took it took quite a while and uh, here's a not really nice close-up view you can just see how well the cutter deals with this cast iron straight through no problems and because the blank was a bit thicker than it needed to be um, I cleaned up those burrs on the end with a facing cut um, afterwards and it ended up perfect. Look at that beautiful cut. Cutting gears really isn't terribly difficult to do. Uh, it's a matter of concentrating though because it's quite a, you know, a rep lot of repetitions. In this case there's 63 repetitions. You have to do exactly the same thing every time. Um, so you have to keep, keep your mind in the game, uh, so to speak. And also make sure that the little clips that hold the, the, the dividing sector in, stay in place and that the table's clamped properly and, and and, 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 and all of those things are, are right so it's easy to stuff it up but if you if you keep your mind on the job you can do it it's not it's not not super difficult it looks a lot harder than it really is all right well that's it we got all the way around and things lined up again at the end with where we started and um, you see it's a nice tight fit on my mandrel um, it's quite hard to get it well, not too hard but a bit tricky to get it off and uh, eventually it will come off and then I can check it against an existing just grabbing an existing Myford gear and seeing how they mesh up and they seem to mesh up just fine so I think we've got a success on our hands. All right, now we've got our gear made, we need to figure out a way of cutting a keyway into that gear. And the way I came up with was to get a piece of high-speed steel that was round. I thought if I use a piece of round high-speed steel, I can put that in the milling machine and it will be dead center with the um, spindle and then I can center the spindle on the gear and I know I'll be in the right place and then it's just a matter of, uh, of moving it in the y-axis so you can see here I've got it set up and I'm just nibbling away I uh, yeah, moving the y-axis across and using it like a shaper and initially I needed to change the clearance uh, to give myself 
some top clearance and some bottom clearance and once I did that it was great and uh, it really didn't take too long to chomp its way through that cast iron and we've got a really nice tight fitting keyway perfect and here you can see I'm testing the um, the little I don't know what you call it a little uh, bush um, from the lathe and it worked great and the last step is to just uh, clean up the thickness and take off those burrs and put some decorative fillets on the side which you don't really need to do but they look good and also um, it's a really good idea to stamp the number of teeth on there so you don't have to stand there counting them to make sure it's not a 65 and it's a 63 so well worth stamp, putting the stamp on and there it is looks pretty good now we've finished our gear it's time to test it out by cutting a 2BA thread I have machined some material to size with a narrow section at the front and at the back the narrow section at the front helps me to see how deep to cut the thread and also helps me to align the die later on. Chasing with a die gives a really nice surface finish but because the die follows the threads that we've cut on the lathe they're guaranteed to be straight. The narrow section at the back provides a clean end to the threads so that I can stop the tool once it's clear of the work. This helps prevent chipping the tool which is quite pointy and fragile. Because the thread is not a standard imperial size, we can't disengage the lead screw. Instead, I stop the lathe and retract the tool with the cross slide. Then I reverse back to the start before setting the cross slide back to zero and advancing the compound slide to increase the depth of cut. Well, one of my philosophies in life is that if you want to learn something, do something stupid, and you'll definitely learn something along the way. And I think. Uh, it was a crazy idea to make this gear because I could easily have cut this thread with a die and lined it up and the lathe and it would have been fine. Or I could have just used a different thread and cut it uh, at, you know, model engineering 40 TPI or something like that it would have been easy. Uh, but I said, no, I want it to stick to the print and, I want, and, I, and I've always been fascinated by BA threads because uh, they're so weird. And I discovered that the reason they're weird is they start out at uh, six, six millimeters and one, uh, one millimeter thread pitch, and then each size down uh, from one to two to three, it reduces by 0.9. So the diameter reduces by 0.9, and the thread pitch reduces by 0.9. So you get these crazy, you know, 1.8 thread pitches that make no sense at all uh, so that was really interesting and um, cutting this gear was really fun so I'm glad I did it uh, it came out really well and uh, it's a success that's my that, that's that's where I am with the this this is really just a test one I'll do it again properly but um, that that threads on on my test nut threads on really well and uh, when I check it the straightness it's 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 bang on so that should be really good uh, for the piston anyway enough gabbling from me and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time if I can figure out how to turn this off <laughs>